Hi, my name is Paul Seal. Welcome to this new series where I show you how to build a website with Umbraco content management system. This is from version 10 and above. With Umbraco, it changed when it got to version 9 and instead of using .NET Framework, it moved to use .NET 5 and 6 now. So in version 10 of Umbraco, it uses .NET 6. .NET 6 is a long-term supported version of .NET and Umbraco 10 is a long-term supported version of Umbraco. So this tutorial should be relevant for a good while, um, especially as they don't tend to, intend to change the platform in which it is based upon anymore. Um, it will just be the versions that change. The next long-term supported version of Umbraco should be Umbraco 13, when the next long-term supported version of .NET is out, and that should be .NET 8. So, what is a content management system? So you've probably heard of a content management system or you might not realize you have when you think of a blogging platform like Blogspot or WordPress or Optimizely or Kentico or Sitecore. They're all content management systems, a way for you to save your content and serve it out on a web page. And Umbraco does it really well. And Nowadays, with it running on ASP.NET Core, it's very fast as well. Um, Umbraco uses SQLite for development if you want to. So you can use the full SQL or SQL Azure, but you can also use SQLite now. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is use SQLite, which is one of the most popular databases out there. You've probably got it on your phone, serving the apps on your phone. Another good thing about Umbraco 10 is that it is cross-platform now. So you can develop on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, so that is new for Umbraco. Since Umbraco 9, you've been able to develop cross-platform. And now with Umbraco 10, there is official support for cross-platform development on for Umbraco, which is brilliant news because a lot of people are using Mac or Linux these days. They don't want to necessarily be tied down to developing on a Windows machine or for that matter, hosting the site on a Windows a VM or app service or things like that. So you can find you get cheaper hosting if you're hosting in a Linux uh, server or container. So let's get into this then. So let's learn how to install Umbraco 10. It's different to how it was in Umbraco 8 on my last big series that I did. So let's have a look. Before we get into installing it though, what we need to do is make sure that you've got .NET 6 installed. So if you search, if you Google .NET 6 download, and you should find yourself onto this page, and you want to install the relevant um, version for your machine. I think I installed Windows X64 for my laptop. Once you've installed .NET 6, then you should be at the point where you can get started with trying to install Umbraco 10. Now, some of the um, install commands are quite hard to remember. Um, in or, you can use Visual Studio and the templates to create a new project, a new Umbraco project even. But um, what I tend to do now, now that we are in this new .NET 6 world, there's a lot more command line interface usage. So what I've created was this website called Package Script Writer, which gives you the scripts that you need for installing Umbraco and with all different options. So you can do unattended install. That's where the install happens and it creates a database for you and you just run the commands and leave it to do it. So there's all sorts of things like that. And I've utilized that. Um, I've created this website to make it easier to install on Braco. So that's what I'd like to base this tutorial on is the scripts that you get from this. So if you go to psw.codeshare.co.uk, then you should end up on this page. And the main purpose for this was so that you could install Braco easier and also find the packages and the commands to install the popular packages for Umbraco. Um, let's just have a look at the options. So we want to install an Umbraco template. We want the latest stable version. So there are some release candidate versions out at the time of recording this, but we're not going to use those. We want the latest stable, which will be 10.1, uh, 10.0.1. 
and we want to we don't want to include a starter kit because we're going to be starting from the bare bones empty on Braco site and we're going to build our document types and templates and properties ourselves we do want to create so we're going to untick install starter kit and you'll notice that that updated here so now there's no starter kit package being installed we do want to create a solution file we're going to be basing this on what we did on our last series the clean blog um, which is from start bootstrap and you can download this for free so we're going to build a website which looks like this and we're going to build it in on braco 10 this time so let's go back here then so let's call our solution clean and let's call our project clean dot site and the reason why i call it the site is because sometimes people have a project in their solution called dot web and that is actually got web um, library classes and things like that so whereas dot site is clear it's the actual website project that's why i like to do it that way i'm going to use unattended install and i'm going to use sqlite so as i mentioned you've got different options um, you can use local db for version 10 as well you can use sql azure you can use uh, full sql and you can use sqlite so we're going to use sqlite it's really easy you you it it should be the most convenient one to use so we use sqlite um, with this tool that i created you can put in a username and password and it will create an account for you using this unattended install so i'm going to show you how to do this so this script now will download the latest and braco templates it will create a new solution file called clean it will create a new project called clean.site and it's going to use the unattended install creating me a user core administrator with this email address and password and the uh, development database type is going to be sqlite and then it's going to add this clean.site project to our solution and then it's going to run the project so all we have to do to install umbraco like this is just copy that script go to our folder where we want to install it open up the terminal and then paste it in here and then it will warn you you're pasting in some commands do you trust where you got the commands from yep i do paste anyway now if you like the terminal setup that i've got here i just basically followed along from one of scott hanselman's blog posts on how to pimp up your terminal using oh my posh and some other things like that as well so you can uh, do that if you were wondering what that was and how it's done you don't have to use terminal if you're on um, Mac you might want to use bash I think it is um, and in Windows you could just use the command line you know the cmd.exe but I'm using Windows terminal for this so it's ran those commands as we can see it's created the solution and now it's running the project uh, clean.site is building the code for us and then pretty soon it will try to attempt to connect to a database now it's been created it, it outputs it into the window so you can see what's being um, created so all these database tables and indexes for the umbraco site have been created in there and we now have a site running on this address https localhost 44308 so if we control and click one of that's one of the good things about working with windows terminal is that you can control and click on that url whereas in the command prompt you can't you just have to select it and copy it so when you install on braco as an empty site and you you get to this screen it says welcome to your installation you see in this page because it doesn't contain any published content yet so that's fair enough you click on the open on braco and it should take you to the login screen and we know what our login details are because they're in the options here so we've got username was the email address and the password was this one now don't forget you can change these to be whatever you want them to be uh, i'm just using what the default was on the site that i made 
So when you get into Umbraco, it gives you a tour and it's quite handy to follow this tour and understand a bit about Umbraco. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly have a look at this tour and it will give me a good way to prompt. It will prompt me to tell you about different sections on a high level look before we get into actually building the website. So welcome to Umbraco, the friendly CMS. And the reason why it is so friendly is because of the Umbraco community. Everyone in the Umbraco community that I know of really wants to help everyone else succeed and do well. So very helpful community on um, Discord, uh, on the Our Umbraco forum and all sorts of places. So let's start the tour. So this is your main menu. These are the sections of when you're navigating on Braco, this is it. This is the main menu. It goes across the top. Preview in other versions of Umbraco, it used to go down the side here. These in this main menu, as I say, are known as sections. And this here is the tree. So the tree is used for listing out content, settings, all sorts of things. You know, as this, sec this left section here is known as the tree. Um, on the right here, these tabs are known as dashboards. So when you're editing content item, it's using the dashboard on the right hand side. And there's different menu settings and all sorts that show up in the dashboard. Search whenever you want to look for a content item or anything like that, you can quickly search by using this search icon here. Use a profile if you want to um, change your email address or your password or your um, avatar, things like that. You can do that by clicking on your user profile. And then you can see details about it and you'll be able to change your password, edit your profile and things like that. Let's close the user profile. Help. If you ever need any help, click on the help drawer and then you've got more tours that you can follow. And you can find out about the Umbraco forum. And also there's a really cool thing here, which is system information. So if you ever have any issues. Um, and you want to raise a ticket on the GitHub repo, you can copy this system information here, and that will tell them what your browser is and what your operating system you're on and everything like that. It's got a table of those details. You can, as I said, you can follow on different tours. So we've just used this tour section here just as a brief introduction to Umbraco, uh, but you can follow the tours and uh, navigate your way around them when learning about Umbraco. Right, we've completed the first tour. Let's close that. So as I said, this was the um, main menu. These are the sections. We have content, media. So, the, so content is your pages. So you would have home and all the pages underneath it. Media, it will be folders and files related to images and um, documents and videos and things like that. Settings is how the whole thing is all configured. So um, this will be your document types, templates, um, partial views, all sorts of things like that. Packages. Here it gives you information about what packages are available. This is basically similar to the site that I created. In fact, the site I created, PS Package Script Writer uses the same feed that um, this is using as well. So I just use the same feed that this is using. So this gives you information about the packages that you can install, but you can't actually install them at this point from the back office anymore. That was only available in versions up to Umbraco 8. But if you were to click on a package, it would tell you what the in install command is if you wanted to install that. Then if we go to users, this is the section where you can create users and change passwords and create user groups and change permissions. We won't go into detail about that now, but just be aware of it that that's what you can do. Members in Umbraco is about how you can have front end members, so for logging into pages on the front end of the site. 
so you can create members and you can manage those members and what groups they're part of in here forms umbraco forms is a um a commercial package um maintained by umbraco hq themselves and heavily developed lately to add the features that people have wanted for a long time they're really investing in it and they're making it a really great package um, if you go with a gold partner they can get you on braco forms for free and you can also just buy a license for Umbraco Forms. And I believe if you use Umbraco Cloud, you get Umbraco uh, Forms for free as well. Then there's a the translation section. And in here, you've got dictionary items. So you can create your um, dictionary items to use on the site. So if you've got a multilingual site and you've got a piece of text on your site, rather than it being hard coded in one language, you can actually turn that into a dictionary lookup and then you can have different language values for that. So you can have it in English, Danish, Swedish, etc. So that's the main introduction and the main look at the navigation up here. Um, if you click on this, it tells you what version of Umbraco you've got installed. This screen here is the getting started. So this is just some when you log into Umbraco. Um, there's a feed of news basically from Umbraco. Um, you can turn this off if you want to. And in this series, I'll show you how to add a different package for this dashboard and to turn this off as well. Not, not that I've got anything against this. And then in this tab here, we've got a redirect URL management. So later on, I'll show you about this. So I think for just getting started, and just installing Umbraco, we'll leave it there. Um, in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to download the clean blog template and we're going to start creating our website. We're going to create a document type for the home page. We're going to create a master template and the template for the home page. So we can start to create our own site. So I hope you liked the video. If you do, please click on like and subscribe to my channel so you get more of the videos in this series. And uh, please share it with others as well. And um, if you want to say thank you, some people do, you're not obliged to, but when people do, I do appreciate it. But as I say, this is free content, no one has to, but if you want to, you can buy me a coffee using the link codeshare.co.uk. So, I will see you in the next video when we'll do what I've already said there, what I've introduced about building this website and we'll get started with doing this site. So the first one was more of an introduction to Umbraco 10 and getting the basic install set up. The next we'll go further with it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.